My name is Mark Karski, I love you guys. Woo! Give it up for Mark Karski, making it look easy. Greta Van Fleet? What kind of, uh, is it like the, uh, the music for the wife? It sounds like he's whining a little bit. He's like, oh, I loved you. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> How much time do I got left? Because it's not going to get funny. <laughs> For the shotgun rounds, I'm not going to have the shotgun rounds are for where they imp you have to improvise and they give you a topic to talk about. I might not have an in car discussion. I might just have this in place of it, like me talking podcast wise and then the set because there's not really much I can talk about in the car right there aside from like me being anxious and stuff because there's not a lot of planning. I can't really talk about what I'm going to talk about since I'm going to be getting their topic and they the rule is you stay on try and stay on the topic as much like don't dip into your set. Just try and always stay on topic or like my thing is stay on topic or talk to the audience. If they get you into talking about something else, you can always go back. Hi uh, guys, if you've been attending our Monday open mic, you might already know this, but if not, we started a new tradition here at the Comedy Shrine where if you sign up, you can sign up for a shotgun spot, which means that you can come up here and your host, me in this case, will give the comedian a topic and he has to do his entire set on that topic. Which means if he's struggling, he's got to keep it going. He can't just dip into material and go from there. He's got to do the topic the entire time. Your next comedian to sign up for a shotgun spot, his name is Mark Carsey, and his topic is going to be concerts. Concerts. Oh boy. Is this on? Is it on? Yep. Okay, cool. I'm at the, like, I used to go to concerts all the time and just, uh, like, EDM concerts, but just to take drugs, though. You know, just Molly. That's the only reason I would go. I love those. Not anymore though. I don't think there's a certain age where you can't just you can't tape Molly and go listen to music and be fine for the rest of the week. That pushes all your serotonin, right? Or like dopamine or something like that? Yeah. Hey. Yeah? That would really fuck me over at 26. Mm. I, I, I feel tired just thinking about it. Oh my god. <laughs> like my jaw just constantly chewing. And my friend talking to me like uh, like I'm a dog. Mark, come here. Where are you going? Come here, stop, come here. I'm just like looking at him. And I just walk away. Because you just kind of follow the music or whatever feels good. You might just sit there and hum to the vibration of your body at a certain moment. Have you ever done that? Just verbally hum? Like that? Is that magic your vibration? It feels good, right? Me and concerts on Molly, that's what I do. It's hum. Just like that. Has anybody been to a... I know it's been a pandemic. That's over, right? Is that, or is that still going on? Man, it's kind of just fading away. I think people don't care anymore. Yeah, I never cared, but yeah, I think you're right. <laughs> There's no masks, which is cool. Is the Ukraine, that's still going on. That's pretty fresh, right? That didn't just, eh. yeah. and this, <laughs> that's, that's ending too. <laughs> that's like never gonna happen. Dude, the price of gas, is that correlated or is that just? It's correlated yeah. somewhat. Yeah. So it's, okay. I feel like they, that happens like every new president. Now. Like every time the new president goes up, right? Or is it I don't give a fuck. I don't care. <laughs> I don't have a choice. It's not like you'd be like, oh, that's too expensive. What the fuck are you gonna do? <laughs> wow. You, you have to drive your car, dog. You can't. I'm just gonna go lease a Tesla. Go lease this car here. <laughs> At this concert. <laughs> um, has anybody got a concert coming up? Or have you been to a concert recently, huh? You look at it, you're lucky I can see you. I can't see fucking <laughs> past the second, third, fourth row. Okay, what concert are we going to? Tool. Been to? Tool, holy shit. I'm trying to go see Greta Van Fleet in a few days. What was that called? Greta, Greta Van Fleet. Greta Van Fleet. Holy, that sounds like an old store. Oh my god. That would sell handmade shoes by people in town. <laughs> <laughs> Greta Van Fleet? What kind of. Uh, is it like the, uh, the music for the wife? It sounds like he's whining a little bit. He's like, yeah. oh, I loved you. Like that. <laughs> 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 How much time do I got left? Because it's not going to get funny. Right? <laughs> you have two minutes, 15 seconds. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> I'll slowly walk and get the mic stand. Uh, so, Greta Van Fleet, what kind of yeah, I don't give a shit, actually. Yeah. <laughs> hey, baby Led Zeppelin. Led, Led Zeppelin? Baby, like, baby Led Zeppelin. I like to like compare them honestly to like a mix of like Jerry Rush Led Zeppelin. I'm a little bit of pink Floyd. You know, I hate how much that didn't help me. Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> I strictly listen to black music only. <laughs> and I take a credit back. Winkle is not black. 
Van Winkle sounds correct. <laughs> sounds like a monster. Greta Van Winkle. <laughs> I love you guys. My name is Mark Arsky. <laughs> Yo, what's going on, guys? Uh, it is episode... I almost said you read that title correctly. I always say that during my <laughs> fucking uh, main channel YouTube videos. You read that title, right? Uh, this is episode 32 of The Comedian. Um, I was having a little bit of anxiety about making this for some reason. I just haven't felt like filming in the past two days. Or, like, I've just had stuff to edit, I guess. Um, and I've had, like, not a lot of time, I guess, to film. I can, like, film when I get home and stuff. But, like, I've been waking up, let's say, let's see, like, usually at, like, between 9.30 and 11. And then, then I fucking uh, pretty much just get to work and after I eat and shit like that or whatever. That's not what this is about. This is about comedy. So I just watched my uh, improvised set. The topic was not good. The topic was concerts. It's not good because... um. Corona, you know, there's nothing, no concerts, nobody going to concerts. Uh, there's a couple of things I guess I could have talked about. I had a concert that was coming up, or I could have caught, talked about concerts I went to. I feel like I really didn't, like, dive too deep into the topic that much. Also, this is, like, hard to talk about and critique, uh, improvising and riffing on stuff. You know, it's just... um I, I, you know, because it's not like stuff I had planned where I knew where I wanted to go with it. But even in the next episode where I... um did kind of have an idea of where I wanted to go, but I kind of just went up there more like blindly with just ideas and stuff. But tonight I have one where I, and it's another shotgun round like this one was where they give me the topic and I talk about it. Um, but I think it went good. You know, it could have been obviously, um, could have been worse, could have been better, of course, right? But like improvising and riffing on stuff is super hard. So I always try and get the crowd involved. So I think that's always a good thing to do when doing improvised sets and shit like that. Um, that girl was super helpful. I think I, I really wish I was, it happened deeper into the, uh, this is why I like shotgun rounds because I talk about stuff I'd never talk about. Like where I got to talk about that girl's band. She likes, I got to great make the Greta, Greta Van Winkle joke at the end. I got to, uh, the biggest laugh was where the, Oh, I loved you where I did like the fucking voice of the, uh, the whiny complainy white guy singing, um, I, I definitely wanted to end it there while I was on stage. Cause like you, over time I've learned that like try and end on the biggest laugh. Like when you know, that's going to be the best it's going to get be like, all right, I'm fucking out of here. It's going to go downhill from here. It's, you definitely want to leave people with the best impression. Um, but since it was so, I had two, like two minutes and 15 seconds left, you know, I had to keep it going and shit like that. I can't bail that early. So I think it went good though. Um, I also, I'm not always going to like today, like for shotgun rounds. Um, so this might be the part uh, I put in the beginning there or something like that. Like I might, I might make um, part of this video or I might just do this and copy and paste this and put it in there. So like um, for the shotgun rounds, I'm not going to have the shotgun rounds are for where they imp you have to improvise and they give you a topic to talk about. I might not have an in car discussion I might just have this in place of it like me talking podcast wise and then the set because there's not really much I can talk about in the car right there aside from like me being anxious and stuff because there's not a lot of planning I can't really talk about what I'm going to talk about since I'm going to be getting their topic and they the rule is you stay on try and stay on the topic as much like don't dip into your set just try and always stay on topic or like my thing is stay on topic or talk to the audience if they get you into talking about something else you can always go back the main topic it's a good lesson of like staying on the main river and going off in different streams i heard joe rogan say that and i always thought that was good the main river is the stuff you want to talk about in the different streams as long as they come back to the main river you can go down all the streams you want and shit but i'm excited for tonight um hopefully i remember to copy and paste this in there in the beginning uh, i think i will uh everything's going good like the um i'm not really scared like i, I was about to say not to be scared of bombing because i mean i'm not because nothing's going to happen. You're not going to die. Right. You know, like, uh, but I, I don't think I would make the, like if I bomb tonight for the shotgun run, I won't make the excuse. Well, at least it wasn't my material. Cause it is, you know, my material and stuff. I like the shotgun runs better. Um, but I'm not like scared of, you know, like if I, a joke doesn't land, I kind of just let it roll, roll off me. I don't really, um, 
It doesn't seem like, like I, I let it affect me too much. I guess I haven't had too many. Like I haven't like sucked the air out of the room since the third episode. You know, I've probably in other people's eyes bombed and been it's been cringy, but like comparatively, the feeling is like nothing. Like if you like jokes don't work compared to sucking the air out of the room and making people go, Oh my god. Ooh, this fucking hurts to watch. Uh is different than just a joke not landing. Because like it's an open mic, you know? And with this one, there was uh I believe not that many people there. I think there was maybe a max of 10 to 12. That's including staff. So nothing wrong with that though. Cause like I did a set recently where there was five, six people in total for the whole open mic, me and five other people. When I was doing my set, one of the people went to the bathroom. So like it's harder to do a little bit of people. It's harder to get a reaction out of them. But like this room at the comedy shrine is a good room. They laugh. They want you to do well. Like they, like saying they laugh might sound like, of course they're going to laugh. But like some places they don't want to. Like they don't, they're de- there just to see their friend and they're just fucking just watching you. Fucking old and staring at you in the front row, like at LOL. Uh, I just did that place last night. That'll be episode 33. And it's a crowd. Every time at LOL, they are. That old crowd, they just don't want to laugh. It's weird. It's like you can feel that they don't. Even uh, me and the host talked about it. Um, He's like, "That's a good set. Don't let them like uh, make you think it wasn't. That doesn't. That's not a good dictator of how your set's going." Which I agree. Sometimes it's it actually is like this time. Like there, it is the audience. It's weird, and they give you this whole vibe while you're on stage and all this. So it's good to practice that. I want to keep going back there, even though if the audience is bad. I know this isn't about the set I just did, but whatever. Um, I haven't reviewed the set of me at LOL, so I still got a bunch of shit to look over for that. But, like, a bunch of shit, just just the one video. But uh, it, there's a lot to think about when you're watching it and critiquing and stuff. But, yeah, I think going up on stage where people don't want you to laugh is a good feeling because going to uh, different rooms and maybe Chicago might be like that's more intimidating. You can see everybody's face in Chicago rooms because they won't have a big spotlight on you. I don't know. I'm excited to start doing uh, Chicago rooms. I might do that when it gets nicer out. Maybe I'll take the train out there or something because gas is fucking crazy expensive. Driving an hour back and forth is wild. But YouTube's going good in every direction, uh, both YouTube channels and all that shit. But so stand up, stand up is going good. I'm proud of it. Uh, I like just going like I don't like I would just go and get up. You know, I don't, I don't like have this whole like going through and like trying to do word for word each joke and like you know I don't know like I just like that it's just part like doing this I just turn on the stuff and go I don't have like this sheet of checklist of stuff I want to talk about if I did it would probably be worse um that's why I like the shotgun rounds where they give me the topic for me to talk about and I might do that with more crowds ask them what they want to talk about I think Mark Norman actually does that at the end of his sets he has people to yell stuff at him he'll talk about it but I might just start doing that because that's good in the beginning I guess. I mean, it helped me. I I feel like I felt like I have my voice for my YouTube channel and just being, and that's being me or just kind of like an elevated version of me and me on stage is getting close to that of the YouTube one, my main channel, Winebox Poppy. And that's good. You know, that's a good place to be. Like I can just, uh, what point was I trying to make right there? Hmm. I'm not sure, but Oh, that's like my voice, I guess. Like I, I feel like I have my voice. It's, um, already a proof of concept from doing the YouTube channel. So I already have my voice and shit. A lot of people all sound, what I'm noticing is a lot of comedians sound the same. Um, I don't know if any of them are going to watch this, if any of them do, but like if one of them had a podcast, I would listen to it and shit like that. So um, if they are, it's not you, don't worry about it. But if it is just like, like where they all sound like, and then, and then, and then, and then, and that's, that's the, it's not like you can just hear, the same beats, the same tonality of, and stuff. It's like they're something about the writing. And, so, and this, I shouldn't be like critiquing others. Like it's not, you know, my, I mean, it is kind of my place. Because I mean, if they all do sound similar, I don't know. Because hmm. to me, that's like kind of the old style of doing it. You know, like the Jerry Seinfeld type where the new way is kind of like Louis C.K.-ish where it's like more storytelling with jokes inside of it, Burt Kreischer ish, you know, like, or whoever else you want to talk about. Like, like Mark Norman is like, he still work. It, it still works. He, he's great. He's a jokey joke guy. If you want to see somebody who writes jokes and each, knows each single word for the piece and shit like that, instead of like a Joey Diaz, you know, 
But uh, I'm not going to drag this out just to drag it out. Um, Because, you know, it's an improvised spot. There's not much to, you know, because I can't be like, oh, this part didn't work. Take this out. I can just find things that do work and keep them. You know, it helps me go down different avenues and shit like that. Uh, Right now, since I didn't record this right out, like the next day after, before I went and did the set on Sunday, I kind of just like procrastinated a little bit and didn't review it. Now the sets are getting mixed up in my head, so it's going to happen again. Um, I'm not going to just review, get up and then watch the other one and then review it right away. I'm I'm probably going to review it tomorrow or something. And after that, I have to review the. I'm going to get kind of backtracked, backlogged a little bit here because I got a set tonight and a set Tuesday. Um, at Josephine's tonight's the comedy shrine. Okay. A lot of work. That's cool. When your plate is, I saw this quote, probably cringe, but it's good. I like it. If your plate is full, say grace, right? Cause some people like, I, I would assume don't like when your plate's full, when you're like super busy and have all the shit to do, but that's a good thing. Cause having nothing to do is hell and that shit sucks. So I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for watching this channel and, uh, supporting it and everything. It means the fucking world. If you want to support further through this comedic journey, um, there is patreon.com slash wine poppy where there's a Patreon podcast and, uh, also got my main channel where I make fun of a lot of uh, reality television. It's a good time. If you want to go check that shit out, but if not, just like uh, subscribe, <laughs> I almost fucked that up. Like subscribe, comment, share it shit around. Let's get the algorithm going. I appreciate you guys. I love you unconditionally. Every single one of you. Mwah.